Hello and welcome to another edition of Artist Gone Artist. It's the Glass Tower podcast where we have casual conversations with artists and art professionals about contemporary art, what's going on in their work, and just some general questions getting to know artists. And today our special guest is Kingsley Onyewu, and we're here at the Hooks Epstein Gallery where Kingsley's exhibition is currently on view, but sadly won't be on view uh, <laughs> uh, by the time this airs. <laughs> Kingsley Anyewu, welcome to Artists on Artists. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Usually the conversations I have are with artists whose works I'm somewhat familiar with, um, but it's a particular treat when it's an artist that, uh, whose work I'm being introduced to, and this is one such occasion. Okay. To just get started, I want to ask you about the space that we're in right now. What is your relationship with the gallery, and how did your work uh, end up in an exhibition here? My relationship with the gallery space is, uh, has been one of quite the uh, origin, you know, to my background as a you know, in my career as an artist, um, I remember having a show, um, it was a summer program at um, Project Row Houses, and that's when I got approached by uh, Jerry Hooks, and um, she came down herself to see the show, um, to see my works in, in my um, space at Row Houses. She was really supportive, and, and that was a in my senior year at uh, Texas Southern University. Um, she thought my works were were um, beautiful, and I have a lot of stories to tell with my work, so she actually offered me a show uh, in her space here at Hooks Epstein, and that was about three years ago. Ever since then, Hooks Epstein has, you know, come to feel like my, my home in terms of uh, home gallery space. It's not just on a business level, you know, it, it feels like more like, you know, I'm part of a family. I'm part of the uh, Hooks Epstein Gallery family. So um, that's how my work ended up here. Um, I was uh, advised by my professors back then that it would be a good opportunity for me. And, you know, at first I was I was kind of like shaking and nervous, <laughs> shaking and nervous, because uh, I've never, I didn't really have, you know, I wasn't one to participate in, you know, like a, a program such as that, and I was like this artist that just, you know, I just had a pile of work in my in my studio and my locker in my apartments, and uh, to just, you know, put yourself out there and you know communicate with the uh, with a, with an audience, you know, it's like. A, like a new scenery for me, but um, I had some good mentors like uh, Dr. Wardlaw, Robert Pruitt, um, Lehman Green, and you know they they were really supportive and they just they wanted me to you know go out there and you know be something great, something better, do something better with my talent. And yeah. uh, you know I'm happy I didn't turned out that offer. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm grateful that I, I pushed myself and I participated in that, uh, that particular summer program. Yeah, and it can be an intimidating thing to move from, <laughs> you know, having one show, and I, uh, at the time at Texas Southern, you were an undergrad, right? I was an undergrad, and senior. Yeah. yeah, and then you moved on to uh, Houston Baptist University correct for an MFA yes okay so and that was the encouragement it's like keep going yeah it, it just it just kept going because um, I met uh, Jerry you know at that, that uh, program and I also met Michael Collins from Houston Baptist mm -hmm. at that particular program my works were still up and uh, Michael Collins was a, a, a friend of uh, Lehman Green yeah and um, he also came in to to see the work and um, he was just, you know, I could see the expression in his face and Michael, Michael's always been this, this figure that's, you know, 
know, he always has the right words to say. And, you know, he said the right words at that moment. And, you know, he basically told me, like, he would like to have me at the, uh, in the program at yeah. Houston Baptist. From there, it propelled me into my master's program at Houston Baptist University. What is the origin of your your practice? Uh, I read a little bit in a, a biography where it talked about yeah. you trying to recreate animations that you saw on TV or influenced by maybe the visual television culture that you were trying to recreate as a child. Right. Yeah. Um, you can you can say that. I was just on the phone with my uh, a close friend of mine, and we were talking about how. We both started, uh, he used to be my professor, and like we both started with like, you know, drawing Ninja Turtles and things <laughs> like that, and, and look where we can look at where we, uh, we ended up being, so. You know, yeah, yeah. and I just, the caveat to that is that I have a similar beginning in, oh, really? in <laughs> art, because yeah, my brothers used to draw like uh, from DC and Marvel comics, and then I started doing that because right. me and my friends who wanted to be as good as my brother, right. who was like <laughs> just beyond good. And yeah. so yeah, I, I can see that as an early yeah. influence. So yeah, that that happened, and um, that was my childhood. And um, I remember my my mom, who I you know who raised me. I grew up with my mom because my dad was uh, he was in the states back then, and I was with my mom in uh, Nigeria. Okay, and. Um, she she couldn't really afford you know the the materials and anything so I would literally try to utilize anything I could get my hands on and just you know draw with it if it's a pencil if it's a piece of uh, charcoal from like the burnt wood yeah you know I would just try to scribble and uh, replicate those images I saw from like comic books and things like that uh, so I would say that that nurtured my talent. Mm -hmm. Uh, but obviously that wouldn't be enough to um, propel me to greater heights in my, my career and my uh, journey as an artist. So um, when I um, moved to the United States... Um, How long ago was that? It was like 14 years ago. Okay. Uh, I, I, moved over, uh, I moved over here when I was uh, 14. You have to understand this, like being an immigrant and being the son of an immigrant there's just, when you first get <laughs> here, there's just like, you know, a shock with like what you're capable of doing, like, you know, the freedom and the opportunity, like yeah. everybody would say. And um, I was just in a, an, an emotional height in my, <laughs> in my life. And I just took that opportunity and started just embracing, you know, the arts. Yeah. The museum was just close by, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Museum of Fine Arts Houston, and I would just go there and just like just keep staring at these paintings and you know these drawings and works of art, and that also inspired me. Yeah, you know to just you know keep the practice going on, you know keep the work ethic. Then I enrolled into uh, Texas Southern after high school. Mm -hmm. Then I met um, Robert Pruitt, and Robert Pruitt was my my very first art um, instructor. Really? Wow. Yeah, Robert was my uh, art instructor. Then I saw his works, and it's like, I I didn't even have an idea what the medium was. You know, I thought it was graphite. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if you know Robert Pruitt, and you know he works in couples. I, I saw his works, and you know, I was just humble, and I wanted to learn, you know, how to control charcoal, you know, like that, like how he does. Um, in terms of technique, in terms of understanding how the, the medium works. Yeah. So I'm really, you know, really big on work ethics. I like just being in my studio and just, you know, working constantly. Well, and it's... And sketching and doing things like that. Yeah, and even with the soft pastel uh, work behind us, you can see the... The intricate shading <laughs> and detail, and when I'm drawing, I'm the most impatient uh, drawer, so nothing, everything I do is just, like, expressive because I don't have the patience <laughs> to do this for hours, and it, it I mean, it's photorealistic, it's hyper-realistic, um, but I imagine it's also quite meditative because you do have to spend so much time 
uh, in creating it. And I'm glad you actually said that because whenever I work, you know, whenever I sit, um, keep my focus on a, a particular project I'm, you know, currently working on, there's a conversation going on. There's always a goal, and that that goal changes, you know, um, between works that I'm currently engaged in. Um, sometimes it's it's not really about the detail. Sometimes it's about like the effect of light, mm-hmm. or like you know the softness of the figure. So I kind of like embrace that when I work in my studio. You know, I meditate and I'm having a conversation with the work. It's like, what do I want to make this work? And what kind of conversation do I want to have with this work? Is it you know the fabric detail, you know, to make it look you know ornate and eloquent? Is it the the effect of the light to set an atmosphere, or, you know, yeah. tone or mood to it. So, you know, and I just and I just work from there. That was one of the questions that I was thinking about when I was thinking about your work mm-hmm. because uh, there is a poetic, allegorical sentiment in some of the drawings. Yeah, and I I'm curious about how that uh, relationship emerges. Is it something that you're looking for when you're creating the drawing or is it something that the subject is bringing? I would say it's something that I, I look forward to when I'm um, creating the, uh, the work or the project. A lot of your images are portraits. Mm-hmm. They're portraits of figures that, like in some of the previous ones and in uh, the one that I'm pointing to right now, which yeah. I'll show in the video, uh, and even in that one, mm-hmm. they have some sort of ornate uh, headdress that maybe connects to uh, your Nigerian heritage, but it also, uh, they also have like these Victorian uh, classical um, attire mm-hmm. that kind of, it's like a dichotomy between like the what they are representing in their, their clothing, but also uh, juxtaposed with what's going on above. I would say it's a, um, it originated from a time in my life when I, like I said, I was still getting uh, quite an understanding of what it means to be, you know, an African immigrant, mm-hmm. you know, in the, in the United States. I'm still learning that. <laughs> <laughs> it never ends. It never ends. Yeah, it never ends. We're, all, we're all, you know, part of that, that journey. So uh, at the time, what I was trying to explore, what I was, what I was exploring with my work was uh, the idea of this um, dual identity, you mm-hmm. know, um, being a Nigerian and, you know, having a, a strong uh, European influence on the culture. But the headdress, the coral beads are from, you know, my Eastern tribe. Mm-hmm. And the other uh, Victorian outfits, the attires, um, will be from the European, you know, culture. See, to me, I would say everything I do is about communication and having a conversation. You know, I want the audience to have a conversation with my work. I want to have a conversation with the work itself. and. So I wanted to merge those two ideas into portraitures. I'm quite a fan of portrait paintings. I can tell. Yeah, like everything he has so, in here. Is yeah, and I was I was heavily influenced by figures such as uh, um, William Boudreau mm-hmm. and um, a lot of great portrait artists you know, from the uh, 18th century and 19th century. Yeah, and um, I wanted to be a part of that conversation of you know moving the portraiture from just a mere representation to having a, a message behind it. So uh, my first show at Hooks Epstein Gallery was uh, me introducing myself, you know, as uh, an African immigrant mm-hmm. and uh, introducing myself as being part of a journey, you know, an African diaspora journey of uh, what it means to hold yourself even in a place where you know, it's pretty much a diverse uh, society. So this is that's the representation that I was working with at the time. Yeah. But like I said, I I would hate for anyone to try to you know kind of like put it in a box. Like, okay, this is what he does. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say you're a fairly <laughs> young. You're what twenty nine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and 
not that's not to say it it's reflected in the uh, maturity of the work. The work is is pretty mature in representation, but then it also has a conversation with what what's happening uh, in contemporary art right now. You have some um, affinity or influence from Kehinde Wiley, who kind of juxtaposes some of these same ideas, but yours is more sort of like. I would say refined and stripped down, uh, not only because it's monochromatic, but because uh, where you know Kehinde has like very ornate backgrounds, mm -hmm. you have isolated your figures on just like a stark, like the sheet <laughs> is the background, so the focus is like hyper focused on the figure. <laughs> what I want to say about the uh, the uh, background being plain is mm -hmm. just. Um, I'm a huge fan of process. Yeah. I, I, I love, you know, just having a clear mind and a clear focus. And also, it invites the, uh, the audience to, you know, put that figure in an environment, in their imagination. Having that, that blank space in mm -hmm. the background really just, it really focuses on the figure. Whatever narrative is happening is happening in the figure, and it's not part, like you're not dating the subject by having a background and you're also not like pushing the the narrative somewhere beyond the figure. So I think it, it can be really effective. But you're talking about portraiture mm -hmm. and I not only the contemporary influences, but I can also see the, uh, you know, talking about going to the MFA age and looking at these portraits, these uh, classical portraits, right. I can see that connection. Your work is evolving, but are you, <laughs> are you evolving as a portrait artist or are you moving the only, there's one landscape in here and it's that one. Uh, <laughs> and everything else is portrait. And most of what I've seen of your work. So right. are you comfortable in that space? Uh, do you, are you... I just, I don't like the idea of just being, you know, put in a box of, like, you know, a portrait artist. Right. You know? I, I like the idea of, you know, seeing myself branching out into surrealism, yeah. into, you know, abstract works. You know, I have sketches, I have ideas that I'm working on, and I, I think, you know, it's, it's going to tie into, um, you know, going through a journey in life and just, you know, encountering changes and these changes doesn't have to be bad or you know doesn't have no. to be frightening it's welcome yeah i i couldn't agree more i think uh certainty can be an impediment of its own because it just <laughs> narrows your focus yeah to the one path and i'm drawn to artists who are willing to expand beyond uh what's happening in their studio presently. Mm -hmm. uh, it risks being copies of the same thing, right. you know? And I think it can be a risk uh, in the other direction where, you know, you're doing nine different things like I do in my studio. It's <laughs> like, wait, what kind of, what are you doing? What, what kind of art are you making? Right. But I think for, there's a certain comfort in that because it allows, um, interaction and influence from from life and uh, living versus shutting out influences to the point of perfecting one thing which right. in itself can be a beautiful thing but right. a lot of things happening out there one question i wanted not it's not a question it's an observation uh right. In <laughs> something that I, you did a drawing, there's a video on your Facebook page from 2010. It's a portrait drawing of a figure, like, uh, I think it's like a male figure. Mm -hmm. And it's like a, one of those quick uh, uh, time lapse videos. But you start when, you know, you're, as far as technique goes, you start with the, the eyes of the figure and then you shade the eyes and then you move. A little bit to the nose and then you go to the head and so you're, you're well, there's a point there i'm trying to make it was brilliant and it worked out beautifully but you're also a teacher and i know that when you're in the classroom with 
your students. <laughs> You're telling them to expand their, their gesture <laughs> to create these drawings. So okay. how how do you reconcile <laughs> the way the way you draw versus the way you teach drawing? Okay. Um. Well. And your students will be watching this. So. I, I know they're watching this. So, yeah, I guess I have to talk, talk about this and explain what happened. So I'm glad you, you know, you did mention that was from uh, 2010. I, I, I remember the, uh, the particular work you're, you're talking about. That's why I started laughing. <laughs> um, back then, I, um, I, didn't, I didn't quite have an affinity for process. I, you know, I was just looking forward to the end. So, mm -hmm. but this is what like most students would you know want to think at the you know at the time they think is you know it's just all about the result and you know how you know as long as you make it there to the to the end you know the finish line you know that's all that matters honestly there it's there's just an unmatched beauty for process and you know each step of that process has its own idea of a finish to where you know you could just stop and just let it be. I went from being this student who was just obsessed about you know the finished result yeah. to going through the discipline mm -hmm. you know of having a method to towards the finish. So yeah. well in my class in my class <laughs> yeah I, I don't approve of you know just having this chaotic approach and you know coming up with um, a work of art at the end. It's like you have to explain. It's like it's like you having a conversation with the work. You want to see the steps. Exactly. That's the point. And with art, it's you know it's kind of like you know building a structure. You know you have a, you have to have a solid foundation. You know you have to build upon that foundation. Mm -hmm. And you know you put in the finishing works and the details, and you know you end up with something beautiful. You know I challenge my students to have um, an idea or a sense of navigation to what, towards their end goal and towards the objective of the assignment. So, yeah, I look back on those, <laughs> those uh, videos, those highlight videos, and, um, you know, it's kind of like, it's, it's crazy when you just, when you're younger and you have just, you know, this, this wild energy, you know, this like, being an artist, life has taught me just... You know, being patient. Like yeah, he said you were like talking about how you just don't have that patient. I I feel like for me it's it's more of a discipline. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I have I just I I became this artist who fell in love with just you know being patient, taking little steps, little steps, little steps towards you know the big um, the big goal at the end. Yeah, and, um, it's. It's more confident. It's more appealing to me than yeah. just um, doing the other thing. Although I can do the other thing, but for the sake of my students, <laughs> just yeah, yeah, I would say you know, for my students, you know, before you you start like breaking rules and just you know churning out something you know nice, it's like oh, how did I? It's like. A friend of mine would call it, I guess, you know, reinventing the wheel every mm -hmm. time you draw or every time you paint or do anything. Right. Steps and methods and, you know, procedures are, you know, a thing that I've come to find really helpful and useful mm -hmm. in a studio audience. Yeah, and it shows in the work because, yeah, you can just stop at the technical skill and just show something that... Um, is maybe true to life to the subject that you're creating but I think you can find the subtleties in the patience that you describe in creating these works right. and it also there's no distraction because you're not looking at flaws you know what I'm saying <laughs> you're looking at uh, something that you can engage with completely with all the superfluous things erased and right. you're just you're concentrating and focusing on the subject and what the subject is is saying let's step away from uh art for a moment mm -hmm. uh there are a couple of things that came up <laughs> in my research you know because i the beauty of this conversation uh, not being very familiar with your work is that i have to go and learn about it 
Right. Uh, but one of the things I stumbled on was that you have an interest in soccer and <laughs> in chess. <laughs> and I didn't you know that. <laughs> hey man, research, research. Uh, I did not finish on a football, but boom. I got okay. it. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> so. I don't know your skill level, and I'm not going to reveal mine. <laughs> We're just going to give it a shot and see what happens.